Every Wednesday at 2, we do something here, and today we got something a little bit special, a little unique. I'm going to be answering questions that our audience has submitted, either on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, and we're going to be, or, or email, or phone calls. We're going to be responding to those questions live on camera today. But also, as we're doing this, we're live on Facebook currently. You might as well. You, you two will be watching later. If you're watching and you got a question, you might as well ask. I'm, we're going to be answering some. Duker, the new guy, is going to be asking some questions. He's going to be, going to be commenting, commentating the show. Uh, and so we will uh, we'll answer the questions. If you have a question, ask. Or also, if you have future questions that you want to ask and you want us to address Wednesday at 2 o'clock, then ask them on YouTube or Facebook, and maybe we'll use them. So let's do it, Duke. What do you got, bro? In your 3S system, how long should the six shots take? Ooh, that's, okay, that's really good. The six shots should take no more than 72 hours. You should, you, you, you should, you should have, I, I believe you should have at least three calls in the first 24 hours. I believe you should have at least two calls in the next 24 hours and at least one call in the final 24 hours. I want to cram it all into that first 72 hours. And the biggest reason why is when you think about leads, when you think about their memory, when you think about them thinking about whatever they did for you to get this lead, it's a busy world. Commercials, phone calls, direct mail, radio, all these other social media stuff, all this different stuff online, digital advertisements, Google, everything else. It's a busy world and you want you want them to be responding to you and ready. So, and you want them to remember. Three touches, two touches, one touches, all within 72 hours. So that's, that's a great, that's a really, really good question. Explain the pros and cons between pre-need insurance and final expense. Pre-need and final expense. I don't have a lot of, I, I, can't, I can't just get up here and say that I do. I don't have a ton of experience with pre-need, but I know with final expense, there are some pros and cons. The cons are there's other policies that pay more commission or that cover the family for more money. You know, mortgage protection, annuities, term life, universal life. There's all these other, other avenues. Final expense, I mean, the, the con is it's like a small, super focused niche. But that's also the pro in it as well. It's a su small, super focused niche. They always say riches are in the niches. I love focusing on a niche. No matter wh whatever you're doing, focus on a niche. Focus on type of person. Focus on a product line. Focus on, I mean, PNC agents, they focus on home or auto or both. Keep Medicare agents, they focus on Medicare and then they fact find. Annuity agents, maybe they'll start looking for annuities. Maybe they'll write some IULs occasionally. They start focused on a niche. So that's why I always think about a niche. Um, so some of the big pros, it's, it, it, it's fast, it's easy. Easy for people to qualify for. Easy for you to write and get paid. Easy for you to make six figures. Easy for you to go in and sell it. It's not a complicated sell. You can keep it really simple and learn it really quick. Um, I would imagine pre-needs pretty similar. It just has more to do with the funeral home and uh, protecting the family that way. So, What IMOs do you recommend for final expense telesales? IMOs do I recommend for final expense telesales? Uh, that's a good question. Um, question I'll probably dance around a little. There's a lot of good ones out there. For instance, um, Vince with Northstar was at our uh, conference. Um, Jeff Root was at our conference. I mean, there's a lot of other companies, a lot of people do that. Do that. Um, we we even do some here, you know. Um, but it's not um, all we do. And so there's a lot. The biggest thing with telesales, and to kind of answer that question, is the biggest reason why insurance agents fail with telesales is they don't have a steady flow of people to talk to. And because they don't have a steady flow of people to talk to, they end up not talking to enough people. Very similar to face-to-face -face and telesales. Telesales is tougher. I believe that if, if about 100 agents had to get into telesales and had to figure out telesales, had to do telesales all on their own without help, at least 99 of them would fail. Now, fortunately for you and for me and other people, there are, there are places for you to go and actually learn about telesales. There's companies, there's training, there's scripts, there's all these different things to help you learn telesales. So that's, 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 that's a super, super, super great question. So, Would you still be an insurance agent if you were given a billion dollars? Uh, uh, 100%. I said this before, person didn't believe me, so then they questioned it. Apparently this is the one. I like it. I like it. Thank you for asking that.
If I was given a billion dollars, and I don't even know how many zeros that is, but, but dang, it's a lot, right? I would still, it's like, it's like nine zeros. I would still be an insurance agent. We would still run Secure Agent Mentor. We would still generate leads for agents. We would still have an agency. We would still, we would still focus on content. I would still do videos. I'd probably do more videos because I'd probably be driving with a freaking Ferrari and own a plane, man. If I had a billion dollars, every insurance agent in the world would know who I am by the end of the year. But that's a great question because a lot of people would say, a lot of people say this all the time. If I won the lottery, you wouldn't see me at work tomorrow. These guys know I could be, I could win the lottery. I could win a billion dollars. I'd still be at work the next day and I wouldn't change and become complacent and work less or less hard. And I know these guys believe it and they know it's true. It wouldn't matter, but I love the question. I love the curiosity. I love how unique it is. But I'm telling you what, that's when you know if something's a passion, right? If you love what you do. Derek's been here till like seven o'clock at night every single night. The dude loves what he does. A lot of people, a lot of people here traveled to Nashville for a few days for a weekend. It wasn't about the money. It was about the cause. It was about the passion. It was because they like and they enjoy what they do. So at the end, the end of the day, it's so much less about money and more about the fact that you need to love what you do and have a passion for what you do, even if you get handed a billion dollars. Do you actually take anything to the appointments? If so, what do you take? Uh, this, is, this is kind of funny. When I run appointments, I take a literally like a little pad folio little binder and the only thing it has it's got some business cards it's got a pen and it's got some paper like that's it I keep it super simple one thing I, I, I did start to use later in my career was a sheet that I could leave behind and that sheet would also be tucked in there um, I, 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 I was big on keeping it really simple because I, I personally still believe the more information you give to a prospect, the less likely they are to make a decision because it's sensory overload. You've given them too much. So I want to keep it super simple. Even when I run through my appointments, even when I do the five benefits, I don't want a canned piece of paper where they're all written out and then I just put it in front of them and go over them. I want to walk through it as if it's brand new, as if it's I'm doing it in real time. And, I don't, and also, I don't want them to skip ahead down the paper. I want them to be following along with me and what I'm writing. So when I go into an appointment, I keep it super simple, super basic. I barely take anything. How do you transition from dropping off info to reviewing slash replacing their current policy? Yeah, so, so the big thing is, and, and most, most people, they, they forget that I'm dropping something off. So I show up, I'm there for, I mean, I mean literally, Hey John, hey, hey, it's Cody. I'm here for a two o'clock, you know, or whatever. Sometimes, 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 a lot of times you don't even have to say that. You're just showing up and they just know. And you're walking in. And the biggest thing that I stress when I'm looking at replacing another policy is quick story. I was in Joplin, Missouri um, several years ago. I was training a brand new agent. And these guys will laugh because I do this all the time. But I was sitting there with the prospect. He, the prospect was on the couch. Um, the new agent was in a recliner and I was sitting in like an office I was sitting in his, his little office desk in his office chair in the living room to kind of give you a visual perspective here and I asked the I mean the gentleman kept talking about how, how, how he had another policy and I like seeing if I can put people in better situations and beat other options and beat policies so I asked him I'm like hey dude it would be really helpful if we could find you know if, if, if you could look for your policy you know do you have your policy and there's better ways to ask questions. It was several years ago. And the dude's like, yeah, I, I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. Where most agents would have stopped and said, you know what? Okay, um, well, that's all right. That's okay. You know, they don't want to offend someone. And so I always take one more question because normally when you ask someone a question once, they never know the answer. Even if they know the answer, Sometimes they'll respond so quick that they'll just be lazy and not really, and they'll act like they don't know. And a lot of times they'll still know the answer. So I said, okay, hypothetically, if you knew where it was, and this question doesn't even make any sense, but it worked, so I, I still use it. Hypothetically, if you knew where it was, where would it be? He just said, I don't know where it is, and I'm asking the guy, if you knew where it was, where would it be? And it, it ended up working because for some reason, it, it, it at least gets an answer. It at least gets them to think. It at least gets them to guess and try to get close. 
And the gentleman said, if I knew where it was, it would be right over there in that filing cabinet. I'm sitting a foot away from the filing cabinet. I open up the filing cabinet. I'm, I'm like, perfect. Is it okay if I look? Yeah. I open it up. It's right there on the top of the filing cabinet. But if I wouldn't have asked an additional question, I would have never known. And so that's the biggest thing with replacing policies is you want all the information. If I've got to get them to call the insurance carrier to learn more about the situation, I will do it. Because at the end of the day, it's about helping them. I want all the facts. I want coverage amounts. I want, you know, I, I want if it's a whole life. I, 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 want, I want cash value. I want cash surrender value. I want premium. I, I want to see if there's, if, if there's a chance of the price going up in the future. I, I want to make sure that everything was answered honestly, it, just in case you don't want the policy to be rescinded. There's all types of things you've got to be looking for. The big thing is, when you're looking at replacing a policy, know the facts and be sure that you're comparing apples with apples or at least a better apple, right? So that's my answer to that. How important is it to call a lead immediately? Speed is what you need, baby. It's imperative. It's so freaking important. When you get a lead and it comes to your email, from now on, I want you to do this. If you get a lead and it comes to your email and you see the email come in, and you don't open the email and click on the phone number immediately, I want you to just smack yourself in the face. Every time from now on, because you're wasting money. You're wasting money. They've got a better chance of literally remembering if it's right there in front of them. They just did it. You stay top of mind, you want to, and, and you want to set an appointment. If the goal is to set an appointment, which is the only goal of getting leads, then call them immediately. If you don't, and you're like 90% of other agents that are lazy, and, and, and then you're also lazy. I don't want you to be lazy. Call the lead as soon as you freaking get it. I mean, it's, it increases your chances. I've read that if you talk to a lead within the first five minutes of their response, it increases your appointment setting ability by like 30, 40%. Play the numbers and just call, make the call. Should agents sell for a lifetime or at some point build an agency once they really learn the business? It depends on the agent. There's a lot of people out there that say, hey, dude, go re freaking recruit and recruit everyone and, and recruit more than you sell. Like, I'm not sold on that. We're here to help people and sell insurance, right? So if you want to sell insurance forever and build a client base and, and residual income and renewals and get referrals later, excellent. If you get to where you tap out your income and you're not adding renewals and you want to build a team and a downline and build an agency, great, more power to you. There's no, that's the thing about this business, there's no perfect path. Everyone's different. Every path is different. Every, some people could not manage an agency. Some people can't recruit because nobody likes them. Some people can't recruit because they don't lead by example. Some people should never build a team because they're lazy. Other, other people should maybe never build a team because they don't know anything about the business. The easiest way to recruit and build a team is to lead by example. When you're talented, when you know what you're doing, when you can say, hey, I did this, and I can help you do this, then it's okay. But at the end of the day, you don't have to do anything. Do whatever you want, whatever your goals are, and whatever you see your path to multiple six figures or even seven figures or eight figures, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, and People are going to say, there's people watching this video right now that are probably thinking, oh, seven, eight figures. Like, dude, this, this, you know, that's stupid. That's not, see, it's ha, pie in the sky stuff. It's not real. Let me say it again. There are more millionaires in the financial services and insurance industry than any other industry in the world. Did you know that, Duker? More than anyone in the world. You're in the right vehicle or in the right place. Doesn't matter which path you want to take or what you want to do. At the end of the day, be passionate love the business, be happy with whatever you do, and do it well. Think big, spend some money, take some action, whatever that path leads. If, if it leads you to building an agency, if it leads you to selling, so I heard of an agent last year selling $750,000 in commissions in one year. Like, what percentile is he in out of everyone in the country? Like, something stupid, like a tenth of a, tenth of a percent. So at the end of the day, you can be crazy wealthy, have an amazing life, take care of your family and a lot of other families, no matter what path you choose. So, that's all the questions. I love that, man. Hey, 
If you do, we have any questions on Facebook at all? Before I jump off, all right. How, uh, how do we get your leads? Derek says, "How do how do we get how do how do we get your leads?" You mean the leads that I set forty percent appointment ratio without making more than one call? You mean the leads? I just got just off the phone with an agent that literally made three grand off of a few leads. You mean the leads that come in real time? I mean within freaking seconds, they're hot. You mean the leads that are exclusive, and you mean the leads that help agents make six figures. Here in a future show, real soon, I'm gonna break down how to make $152,000 consistently, and what that looks like, and why agents use our leads to do that. Now, I'm, we're, not, we're not someone that says, hey, you ought to buy our leads because they're the greatest in the world. Arguably true. And I can't think of, I can't think of anybody else that's that's better right now. But what I can say is that they're extremely good, but they can only go as far as the agent. So, so when we preach, hey, speed, shots, and skill, be fast, take shots, don't be lazy, be, be the first be, 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 call it within seconds. Get to six calls on every lead unless unless they tell you to get lost or they set an appointment. And skill up. Leads work for us. Leads work for me. Leads work for a, about, about a thousand agents a month that are a part of our corporation that buy leads from us. But they don't work for everyone because even just like no lead is created equal, no agent is created equal either. If you think that you'll call quick, that you'll call six times, and that you'll read our script and actually role play and care and want to succeed, then if those things are true, then you will have success with our leads. I, I mean, that's it. That's, we keep it simple. Any other questions? What's a good phone number? What's a good phone number? 833-40-AGENT. Again, keep it simple. Have a system. 833-40-AGENT. 833-402-4368. Call into our office. Our lead guys are helping people all day, every day. They helped like uh, a dozen Agents yesterday, um, as a company, we probably helped, what would you say, probably 40, age, 40, 50 agents yesterday as a whole with new leads. They're fast. They're ridiculous. We'll, we'll give you leads and fill those suckers within, a lot of times, we'll get you 20 leads in like 48 hours. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's so amazing that I'm jealous that I was, when I was a new agent, it wasn't available for me because Cody Askins hadn't created Secure Agent Mentor yet. So there we are. Now it's easy for you. All right. Every Wednesday we're going to answer some questions. So ask some questions. YouTube, put some que we get comments, questions all the time. Facebook, we get some comments, questions all the time. Do that and we'll address those every Wednesday at 2 because at the end of the day, what we do is to help you. And if we're not going to help you, there's no reason to do what we do. So that's why we do this because you ask questions. I want to answer them. I want to hang out with you. I want you to try our leads. And I want you to be at Apres Nation when we throw it in 2019. Maybe in Dallas, which has never been said on video yet. So there you go. All right. Uh, any other questions? We good? Thanks for watching. Thanks for the questions. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you Friday.